Hello, my name is Ilana Zaidi. I'm a visiting assistant professor at Seton Hall Law School, where my work focuses on the legal, ethical, and policy issues surrounding the adoption of education technology in schools that teaches, assesses, and creates credentials for students. I have to say that no one has ever asked me what I would do to suppress marginalized communities. Uh, congratulations on the novelty, and here are, the, here are my thoughts. First, I would require students to have access to uh, high-speed internet connections or expensive devices, uh, either inside the classroom or in order to do their work outside of classrooms. Uh, many, many students in marginalized communities will obviously not have the resources or access to expensive technological tools or unlimited data, uh, data plans. Second. I would predominantly rely on digital interfaces as uh, the means to assess students. Research has shown that students who have less access to technological tools uh, at home do worse on tests that are administered uh, through digital interfaces, in part because they simply aren't as familiar with how to use menus and other uh, parts of the digital infrastructure rather than their knowledge of a given task. Next, I would use education technology that provided minimal feedback to either, either students or teachers. The feedback that it did show, I would have be extraordinarily symbolic or binary rather than granular and descriptive. For example, a red, green, or yellow light indicating whether a student is at risk of failing or dropping out. Or a score showing their progress. Uh, simply having uh, just assessment tools that are abstract like that and that don't connect to teachers' own mental models of the different skills and characteristics that they want students to learn makes it very difficult for teachers to exercise their own judgment independently about whether or not they think that the technological tools are in fact accurate and capturing everything they should uh, based in part on the fact that she has access to knowledge about these students in the physical in their physical present that computers simply don't have at this moment. I would also make learning predominantly online and outside, uh, sort of on demand anywhere, anytime, and not require students to gather in physical spaces. This would eliminate the highly con the contextual information that teachers use that is often so useful when they are trying to teach and explain things and to see where students are struggling. It would also create a system that would isolate learners and they would not gain the same social networks that will become invaluable to them in terms of career opportunity later in life. Online platforms also tend to favor the students who have already learned how to learn and uh, students from marginalized communities may meet, need more so social and emotional support from a teacher or someone, uh, a human, to be able to acquire that skill. Finally, I would rely heavily upon predictive analytics based on historical patterns of past student performance, success, and career uh, achievement. For example, 30 years ago, a predictive uh, tool would have said that uh, who is most likely to succeed in physics? White males. That did not so much reflect the ability of uh, uh, women or minorities to acquire, to, to perform all the tasks that a successful physicist would. They simply did not have the opportunity to even act, to even have the, the possibility of doing so and showing others that they could do so. And lastly, I would say, uh, to if I wanted to suppress minorities, I would strictly characterize education in terms of its instrumental value and rely, rely heavily on quantifiable learning outcomes that can be represented and collected through data and not think about all of the other aspects that are crucial to education uh, that may not involve pure skill or knowledge acquisition and may not directly relate to specific labor market skills. Uh, that would be my evil genius plan, 
and uh, thank you for listening to me.